Good afternoon. Um, today I'll be presenting an MLIR-based compiler that is being used in production to compile workloads on Intel Gaudi accelerators. This is work done by many engineers, including the ones listed here. So Intel Gaudi is a third generation AI accelerator for inference and training. And it provides uh, up to around uh, two petaflops of matrix multiplication computation. And it has inbuilt uh, high bandwidth memories and inbuilt uh, Ethernet controllers for scale out. <coughs> the compute acceleration primarily comes from these two engines. Uh, we have a matrix multiplication engine that is uh, a systolic uh, 2 by 256 by 256 uh, systolic array. And we have eight of these on the chip. And we also have 64 tensor processing cores. Each core is a VLIW processor uh, with uh, support for 256 byte uh, wide uh, SIMD computations. And to enable workloads to run on this accelerator, we provide a suite of uh, software compilers, libraries, and frameworks. Uh, we have support for popular deep learning frameworks like PyTorch. And we also have some proprietary graph compilers. And in this talk, I'll be talking about the Fuser, which uh, uh, is used to program the PPCs. This picture shows the uh, high-level compilation flow on Gaudi. So, and it shows where the Fuser gets invoked and uh, the components it interacts with. So on the left, you see a PyTorch code that is getting traced, and uh, it will be converted into a data flow graph which is then handed off to the graph compiler. The graph compiler does a bunch of optimizations. And while it knows how to deal with matrix multiplications and how to configure the MMEs, it doesn't really bother generating code for the TPCs. Uh, these TPCs are programmable, and to keep an open operator set, it hands it off for other compilers to uh, reason about these operations. So we get a subgraph of operations from the graph compiler. And the fuser then fuses these things and uh, creates uh, LLVM IR. And this IR is then handed off to a LLVM backend, which generates the final fused kernel. This is then given back to the graph compiler. And for operations that the fuser cannot handle, or cases in cases where the user has written their own custom kernel, uh, these are provided by the performance library, and they get picked up from there. The graph compiler then schedules all of this work on the chip and they all run asynchronously. So now I'll get a bit deeper into the Fuser compilation flow. And like I said, the graph compiler gives us uh, an input IR, which is not in MLIR format. And so the first step we do is an importer that creates MLIR, MLIR IR that looks something like uh, what you see on the top right. Um, it's not visible, but you, it, just to give you an idea of the scale of things, uh, typically we have like thousands of operations in this uh, computation here. And this is uh, represented using a custom dialect that we call the TPC kernel dialect. And it's designed mostly to interoperate with other components in the system. So if we don't handle something, this can fall back to a different performance library or another compiler. Uh, we then go through a series of clustering passes, and uh, these passes group these ops into clusters. Each cluster will typically end up uh, running as a single kernel, and there are roughly around like tens of ops in these clusters. And after clustering, we then lower this into another custom dialect that we call the SYN dialect. And the SYN dialect is uh, basically primitive operations. It has some element-wise operations, broadcasts, and reductions. More complex operations like normalization, softmax, they all get broken down into these primitive ops. Uh, we then do a series of high-level optimizations that are easy to do at this level, given that the data flow is very apparent. And uh, then we are ready for our fusion. Uh, the fusion pass uh, takes these multidimensional operations and uh, values, or tensors, and it breaks them up into scalar operations that work with scalar values. And these operations are nested in loop-like structures. And with these values, we can then pass them around in registers and avoid uh, memory reads and writes. Now, as we do this incremental fusion, uh, we have uh, different choices in, in how we fuse an op with its uh, predecessor or successor. And instead of just doing a greedy fusion, we create or enumerate a list of possibilities. And uh, we score them 
uh, using a cost model. Uh, one interesting learning we had uh, during the development of this optimization was that um, we needed to pay attention to the beam diversity here as we prune these options. Uh, if we only go for the lowest cost, then we tend to get stuck in local minima. So uh, we had to put in some uh, optimizations or uh, considerations into the cost model for diversity of the beam as well. So after fusion, we get this loop-like IR that you can see on the left. Uh, it is mostly consisting of upstream dialects here, like uh, the affine dialects, the memref dialects, erith, and math. We can do further loop fusion if needed, uh, and then we do on, uh, more optimizations on these loops. And we end up with uh, paralyzed and vectorized IR that can run on these uh, 64 uh, tensor processing cores. We then do a bunch more of backend optimizations and finally generate the optimized LLVM IR, which is then handed off to the LLVM backend to generate the final binary. Uh, for the loop optimizations, we leverage a lot of upstream affine optimizations. Um, so you can see that uh, there we use the uh, loop fusion algorithms in affine dialect. We use the super vectorizer for vectorization. And uh, we also use a lot of the polyhedral utilities to uh, reason about loops and discover parallel loops. And that's what helps us uh, parallelize and distribute these uh, computations over the different DPCs. Uh, we have upstream enhancements uh, ups uh, wherever feasible to these different parts of the MLR dialects. And in addition to generating code, uh, we also use MLR to extract metadata um, and provide that to the graph compiler. Uh, one important piece of information we are able to extract is uh, if you think of a point in the iteration space of the kernel, the graph compiler wants to know what part of the tensor, what region of the tensor is this kernel going to access when it's trying to execute this iteration. And this comes to us through a fine analysis, and uh, we, we hand it off to the graph compiler. Uh, the graph compiler does some very interesting optimizations here with this, where it first slices the kernel and uh, it can schedule a slice of execution on the TPC. And this slice can then write all its outputs to a local cache or SRAM. And its consumer on a different engine, like a matrix multiplication engine, can start right away as soon as this slice is done. Uh, meanwhile, the graph compiler can schedule the next slice of execution on the TPCs. So we get very nice uh, MME and TPC overlap uh, on these. Uh, we also get to use these high bandwidth caches and SRAMs and uh, some flash attention like schedules uh, that, that are very efficient. And this slide shows the overall performance improvements we get by using Fuser. Uh, the graph on the left is showing different PyTorch workloads that are shown on the x-axis. And uh, y-axis shows the speed up we get by uh, running the Fuser. And you can see that we get up to 50% speed ups. On an average, we get about 30% uh, speed up on Gaudi 2. On the right, uh, I'm showing the performance improvement, uh, just focusing on the accelerator execution. So we collect a whole bunch of traces from these models, run them with and without the fuser. And on an average, we see about a 50% uh, speed up. So to conclude, uh, I've presented an MLIR-based uh, fuser that is deployed as part of the Gaudi stack. It delivers significant performance improvements and works in tandem with the graph compiler to optimize execution of the entire accelerator. We have leveraged upstream dialects like Affine, NCF, Arith, and Math along with in-house dialects. And we would like to thank the MLIR community for all the great work uh, that made this uh, compiler possible. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jordan.